Give us a sense of what you're seeing in terms of transactions. We know that you said before that transactions in Vietnam, Thailand are back to pre-COVID levels. How about elsewhere? And how is that impacting profitability, which you say you should be seeing in uh, the first few months of 2021? Uh, thanks, Linda, for having me. Um, last year was, in fact, uh, probably the most challenging year in the history of the industry. Uh, but since July, um, recovery has been uh, consistent across all, all of our markets, uh, particularly uh, uh, in Indonesia, Vietnam, and Thailand. Uh, today, uh, we the, the volume is roughly about 50%, uh, which happens to be the volume where uh, our company can be profitable as well. So we really look forward uh, to uh, uh, growing again um, um, and riding the recovery wave as well as investing in new uh, initiatives. Has it been enough for you to be profitable already? Uh, correct, yes. Uh, our core travel uh, business is already profit profitable since uh, late last year, uh, but we are still investing in new uh, key areas for us, uh, uh, including fintech, for example. Uh, we are very bullish that uh, coming out of COVID, uh, services uh, that complement travel like fintech will be very uh, important uh, to help customers uh, to continue to afford travel, um, especially uh, after they, ha they have been hit uh, by a uh, 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 probably what, what, what was probably uh, 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 the biggest uh, economy recession uh, uh, rec uh, in, 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 in recent history. Uh, despite the challenges, uh, Ferry, uh, we know that you're intending to raise funds either via an IPO or a SPAC. Can you shed some clarity on that? Which are you, which are you headed towards? Yeah, IPO has been a uh, uh, something that we uh, have been wanting to do uh, for a while, uh, uh, but because of COVID, it has to be uh, delayed a little bit. But this year, I think uh, I think we are ready for it, and the market is ready for it, and um, and hopefully it will happen uh, sooner than later. Very a lot of talk that you're looking to do this through um, a special uh, purpose acquisition uh, vehicle, a SPAC in other words. So tell me, what would be the way you would do it? Would it be that method or would it be just a normal traditional initial public offering? Um, we are looking at our options. Uh, SPAC in, in particular is uh, interesting, right? I'm not in an, an expert in SPAC, but uh, what I've learned about uh, spec is that it's uh, very efficient in terms of time and for a growing company like us uh, time is uh, is something that we uh, you know we value and if you can do it faster and then focus on execution and growing the company and building products then it probably uh, would be attractive to us well absolutely but the uh, flip side of that is that uh, it's something which is really not that familiar to investors in Indonesia itself. So if you're looking at a SPAC, you'd be looking at somewhere like New York, wouldn't you, rather than Jakarta? Uh, correct. Uh, we are uh, looking at the uh, U.S. market uh, uh, and probably um, uh, also in, uh, uh, the Indonesian market down the road. But first, we will uh, consider uh, U.S. first. All right, then there's one other thing as well. You know, we've got Tokopeed and Gojek merging and they're targeting as much as, what, $40 billion as a market valuation. Now, the thing is, and it may be a concern, that you might have to compete for funds from the same investors, as it were, here as well. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, first of all, I wish them well. Uh, William and Andre are my uh, very good friends, and I hope that uh, things will uh, go well for them. But for us, we are confident in the strength uh, of our company. Uh, we are dominant in our core markets. Uh, we are only prof profitable and we are investing in uh, a lot of new areas. And, and so um, I think we, uh, we will explore uh, IPO and um, um, margin acquisition are probably uh, uh, something that we will explore after. Are you concerned, Ferry, that you could be after the same investors as the major group of Tokopedia as well as Gojek? I mean, they're looking at a $40 billion valuation. I think there's a market for uh, good companies anyway, right? Uh, and uh, Travelco in particular, I think, uh, should be able to attract uh, good investors looking for uh, good 
uh, quality companies uh, in an emerging uh, uh, geography such as Southeast Asia. Uh, and our business model is uh, proven. Uh, we are profitable and we have a lot of uh, growth avenues going forward. And I think that should uh, have its, uh, 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 its own market in terms of uh, uh, investors. And speaking of growth, Ferry, any intention for further acquisitions given that the industry uh, is pretty leg lost right now that could be uh, targets that could be uh, coming to you at very attractive prices? Um, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, there are many interesting ideas uh, for us to, to do in terms of investment or acquisitions. Uh, but first, I think we would uh, focus on IPO first. Uh, once we have the currency, then it will be easy for us to consume uh, any other uh, opportunities. Uh, Ferry, just want to go back to what you were alluding to earlier in the interview, and that was uh, how the business is doing during the pandemic. But uh, tell me, has your revenue generating model changed at all from this time last year? Uh, yeah, volume has uh, definitely been down uh, year on year, uh, but it has been recovering since July last year. Uh, at the same time, we are putting a lot of effort in terms of uh, improving the efficiency of our, our organizations and business, such that we not only we can survive, but we can also be profitable at, at, at a lower volume. If the market recovers fully, I think it'll be a huge upside for us. Well, that, that's it. I mean, you know, you get this upside uh, possibly from that. But then what does it mean about uh, the company size itself? Have you been, as they would put it in sort of diplomatic parlance, right sizing? Um, yeah, last year was difficult. We, have, uh, we had to uh, uh, assess uh, uh, our organizations, uh, the business. Uh, we had to, to make some very difficult decisions. Uh, but hopefully we will uh, come out of COVID. Uh, uh, a much stronger company. And in fact, today we are much stronger than we uh, ever were in the past eight years. Uh, Ferry, you've also added uh, lifestyle and financial services in your offerings. How, how much of a game changer will they be? Uh, I think it's a big one for the market and a big one for us. Uh, we have been investing in fintech, uh, uh, particularly one product that I uh, uh, like is uh, the BNPL, uh, the pay letter product. I think it's a good fit uh, for our uh, the markets. It helps people afford uh, travel, um, and I think uh, it's it's uh, I think it's a part uh, it's a product uh, that will that we will continue to invest in in a big way going forward. Uh, the uptake for our product currently, currently is only uh, less than 10% in our own platform, and we are looking to have more of our own captive customers actually adopt uh, the solution. And Ferry, before we let you go, just one final question. When do you see international travel starting again after the pandemic? Um, I think the, the, most, the most important thing is to have people travel uh, safely. And I think today it means that uh, uh, people will do more of domestic travel, uh, whether it be a three hour drive, one or two or three hour drive from where they live or a short plane ride. Um, international travel will come back. Uh, we cannot know for sure. Um, there are signs that it should come back earlier than you know, what many people thought. So vaccine uh, distribution is, 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 is there, it's happening. People are, are, are getting vaccinated. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, people will continue to travel, but just a little bit differently. 